Okay, here we are. I'm looking at Lagrange points, and I'm going to rebuild a way to calculate point L1 and L2. And so I've done this before. I'm just going to get you up to speed. And really, this is just for me, maybe. Uh, but I've, I've worked on this back and forth. I think I'm having just dumb errors, uh, but it's not a big deal. So the Lagrange point, if you have two orbiting objects right here, they're orbiting a center of mass, it's possible to put another low mass object, uh, low mass meaning it doesn't influence the motion of these two, uh, at a location right here, such that it has the same angular velocity as these two. So that means that it will stay in the same position relative to this planet or star or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so in this case, I have mass m1, m2, separated by distance r. That's the parameter I want to start with. And then I have a way to calculate the location of the center mass that orbits around it, and then the speeds that they have. Uh, so there's my r1 is the uh, the distance from the center, the center mass, to mass 1. r2 is to mass 2. And then I have two points in space. There's L1 right here, and there's L2 over here. Uh, and both of these points uh, have have two forces acting on them. The point right here has a gravitational force due to this object and that one pulling back, but it has to have the same angular velocity of rotation as those two to stay there. Over here, uh, there's also two gravitational forces, M1 and M2, but they're both pulling in the same direction. So I did this in a previous video, the velocity, the angular velocity of that binary star system. And then this is the equation that we get. This is for uh, L2 over here because the gravitational force, this is the gravitational force, this is the gravitational acceleration. I divided by the mass of that object I put there. Uh, the gravitational acceleration over here due to mass 2, it's that way. Uh, and everything else is, I'm sorry, now this is for L1 because they're in separate dire different directions. Uh, and this is the acceleration, this is the gravitational force due to mass one. But the key thing here is if I want to change, if I want to solve for the value of RL1, everything else is a constant, it's still very difficult because I have this uh, one over R1 plus RL1 squared, and then I have another term that's different over here, and then I have a different term over here. So it gets very complicated. The best way to solve this is to, or the one way to solve this, is to calculate, pick a value for RL1, calculate the right-hand side of the equation, calculate the left-hand side, and see if they're equal. And so just keep on changing RL1 until you get that to happen. And that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so I've already done that, but here's here's what I actually changed. So if you plotted, uh, if you created a plot of the acceleration as a function of RL1, uh, it would look something like this. I can't remember exactly what it looks like. But it looks like this. And so this is, let's say, the I think the right-hand side and the left-hand side. And so we're looking for this point right here. But this is a huge space, right? Because I don't know, I don't want to say where it is before I find it. So if I start like at r equals zero and work my way down to uh, you know 1.5 times 10 to the 11th, that's one AU, uh, then that's really a lot of stuff, right? So what I did was break this into a thousand steps. So, so it goes like this. These are all points. And same thing over here, right? Now, so when I get this value, it's actually the value before they cross. So it'd be right over here or the one after. I don't actually get the exact value. Um, I could do something like extrapolate uh, two linear functions, assume those are linear, and find the, the point right there. That's actually a really good idea. But I didn't do that. Instead, I made an iterative function. So my function does this. It comes down here, and it finds where these two things cross over, and it goes back to the right before that. And then it starts over again. It does it again. But now it starts right here and it, for both of them, and it moves these forward. But uh, the dr is going to be uh, r over... Uh, something like 10 to the n, right? Where, so each time I go back, I start at a new place, my old solution, and I make a smaller step size. And then that's what I get. And I think this is working, but let's just check. So let me show you uh, my code, my sloppy code. I do have sloppy codes, my own fault. So I went, I went back to uh, GlowScript. Um, so these are just the, this is just a system I'm working with right here. This is the, uh, the gravitational constant, is that too big? 
uh, the mass one, mass two, and the separation between them. This is all just calculated, right? Uh, and I don't actually need to do that because I just wanted to make a function. So here's my L2 function. It has four parameters that you put in there. The mass of star one, the mass of star two, the distance between them, and the number of iterations. That's that n max. So I need to, if I put that stuff in there, I need to calculate r1 and r2, right? Because that's dependent on r, m1, and m2. I need to calculate the velocity and the angular velocity, all that stuff. Uh, and then here, this is for L2. So for L2, I need to find, where am I going to start? It's going to be outside of R2. And, and I have made the assumption that R M2 is less than M1. I just realized that. And if you put in something, I never checked for that. Um, so I'm starting a little bit past. I, I just picked this number, 1.05. I, I put a little 1 in there to see if that made a difference. And it does make a difference. Um, so I still think this is not a perfect system. And then I start with uh, n equals 1. And then I just do it until I reach the maximum number that I want. So I calculate dr, and it depends on n. I started not at 10 to the n. I started at uh, 10,000. No, 10, yeah, 10 to the third, which would be 1,000. Uh, the initial starting value is where I started. Right, so that's where I start, but I'm going to change that. And then here I calculate the le the right hand side, the left hand side, and I do this as long as the right hand side is greater than the left hand side. Uh, then I calculate the both of them and I increase. This is just a, a test in case it goes out of control, I stop it. Uh, but then I increase the value of RL2 and do it again. I keep doing that until those two things cross, cross each other. Uh, once I do, then I move back one step that's what this does right here and i increase my value of n then i go back up here and i do it again so it's kind of an iterative process in this case i could do it as many times as i want and this is what i get uh actually i didn't print that out but uh this is for n equals 10. okay so that's what i got uh now for l1 and i'm going to show you that these work for L1, uh, it's the same thing. I just have a different left and right hand side. And I did have to change this uh, for when you're on the other side of the orbit, uh, you want the the right hand side starts greater, so I'm gonna or starts less than. So I want it to be as long as it's less than the left hand side. But other than that, it's pretty much the same. Other oh, starting location is different too. Uh, so and then down here I just put in my values, which I already did, and then I just I just ran those functions and tested them. But the real test is to put them in an actual system. So here I have um, just a two-orbit system with the, with the third mass. And so it's the same values that I'm using in my other function, which is another program. Um, but I can, I can test. I don't have to worry about putting stuff in here. Uh, so I have star one, star two, the momentums, and the time. Uh, and then down here, I can just paste in the value of my L. This is L. Uh, which one was this? L5059. This is L2, so it should be on the other side. And then I put an object there with that value. Uh, I give it a mass. I give it the momentum that it has to be based on its position, right, to make sure it has the ang same angular velocity. And then I just run the thing. So I calculate uh, for, for the mass, the ball, I have two gravitational forces. I have the gravitational force between that mass and this blue planet, and then between the mass and the yellow star. Uh, and then I have the single force between the two planets to model them. I don't calculate a gravitational force on it due to that little mass. So I calculate the distances uh, for the forces. I calculate that there's three forces, right? Uh, star one to star two, uh, star one to the ball, and star two to the ball. Uh, then I update momentum of the ball, update momentum of the star 2, update momentum of the star 1, and then update the positions, all that stuff, and that's it. So if this is L2, and it is kind of close, uh, so it's kind of hard to see, but you can see that they're much more stable than they were. Uh, it wasn't even making a, a complete uh, orbit before, so it's still not completely stable. You see that it is some separation uh, right there, so that's not perfect, but... Um, I, I think what I have here is a very, very close system. The mass, too, is very, very large compared to the mass 
yeah, it was uh, 10 times greater. Uh, I can change that and play around with it and stuff like that. Now, if I want to do uh, L1, I just go up here and calculate the value for L1. I can put these functions in there, but I didn't want to do that yet. So I have these functions, I can reuse them. Uh, so let's just go down here to RT, right here. And then I, I don't think, I think you can leave that plus or I'm going to delete it. So this is inside the planet. Now you see it's still really close, but there you go. It's right there orbiting. And it seems like it's even more stable, but okay. So I still have to find L3, which is on the other side of the planet, and then L4 and L5. And I'm going to find those and then I'm going to model stability of these. Uh, I, I don't know how far I'm going to get. I want to do a whole bunch of other stuff here, but I have to get ready for the fall semester at the same time. So uh, I'll include the link to both of these codes down below.